Welcome back, fifth grade. We are now going to dive into our article, The Egyptian Roots of Feminism, and go paragraph by paragraph identifying the key ideas so that we can answer our exit ticket prompt. Now remember, we must answer what is the central idea of the article. As a reminder, our prompt is, what is the central idea of the article? And support your answer with at least two details from the text. So scholars, as we create this anchor chart, identifying the key details, those are the key details that you're going to use to support your claim of the central idea. So scholars, in front of you, you should have a P chart that looks very similar to this. Now, as a reminder, scholars, you have already read the article. So we are not going back and reading the article paragraph by paragraph. I'm going to give you time to review the paragraphs, and then you are going to identify the key idea of that paragraph. Now, yes, I'm going to help you along the way, give you some questions that you should consider before you write your key ideas. So go ahead, get your article out. You should have your article and your T-chart ready. Okay, so now that you have your article and your T-chart, let's get ready to dive into this. The first question I want you to consider is, why does the author begin the article by discussing ancient Greece? Again, why does the author begin the article by discussing ancient Greece? I'm gonna give you one minute and 30 seconds. You can go back over, review the paragraph. We're looking only at paragraph one. Within that one minute and 30 seconds, I do want you to jot down the key ideas of paragraph one. Remember scholars, we are just doing paragraph one right now, all right? Let me put one minute, 30 seconds. If you wanna go ahead and start skimming through paragraph one, feel free to do so. All right, scholars, so I have one minute, 30 seconds on the timer. You're going back over, reviewing paragraph one, considering why does the author begin the article by discussing ancient, sorry, ancient Greece, and then you're going to write down your key ideas. Now, one minute, 30 seconds. Let's start it. Twenty more seconds. All right, Skylar, so you went back skim through a paragraph one and wrote your key ideas. So scholars, for paragraph one, the key idea for me was that ancient Egypt was much more ahead of the time and valued women more than other ancient cultures like ancient Greece. So that was the key idea um, that I gathered from paragraph one. I'm now going to give you one minute, 30 seconds. You're going back 
into paragraph two, and you're basically telling me what is the topic of paragraph two. You can also um, explain what was life like for women in ancient Greece. Now, if you do this, I need you to be very specific, very, very specific. Again, what's the topic in paragraph two? And what was life like for women? Be specific. You have one minute and 30 seconds. Let's go. Fifteen seconds. All right, scholars. So according to Mrs. Trotter, I wrote that women in ancient Greece were considered less important and capable and were given fewer rights than men. Again, that women in ancient Greece was considered less important and capable and were given fewer rights than men. So not fair. So, so not fair. All right, scholars. So we are now going to look at both paragraphs three and four. When you're looking at paragraphs three and four, I want you to consider why does the author mention Sparta? And how does this information help us understand the topic of the article? Let's go back to the topic. The topic of the article is the Egyptian roots of feminism. So why does the author mention Sparta? And how does this information help us understand the topic of the article? Your time has started. Okay, scholars, so I wrote that Sparta gave women more rights and was criticized by Greek men for doing so. So the author mentions, mentions Sparta because Sparta gave women more rights and was criticized by Greek men for doing so. 
So scholars, our next paragraphs are paragraphs five through seven. How does paragraph five signal a transition in topics? So look at paragraph five. Identify how paragraph five signals a transition in topics. You have one minute, 30 seconds. So scholars, I wrote that ancient Egyptian women had the most rights, including owning property and taking control of their personal lives. Now let's do a quick recap. In paragraphs one through four, we noticed that women were considered less important, less capable, and they had very few rights. We did see Sparta who gave women more rights, but then they were very heavily criticized by Greek men for doing so. The transition comes in paragraph five. We then see that women, they have rights um, and they're owning property and they're taking control of their lives. Scholars, we are now going to look at paragraphs eight and nine. When we look at paragraphs eight and nine, I want you to consider how does paragraph nine connect to the ideas in paragraph eight? Again, how does paragraph nine connect to the ideas in paragraph eight? You have one minute and 30 seconds. Let's go. So scholars, I wrote that Egyptian women had the freedom to pursue different careers like being a doctor. All right, so let's look at paragraph 10 and 11. Two more things to find, two more key ideas to find. So let's stick through it, guys. 
Paragraph 10 uses a transition word, however. This usually indicates a new idea. What new idea do paragraphs 11 and 12 introduce? Again, what new ideas do we see? Go back, look at paragraphs 10 and 11, new ideas. What are we looking for? Yes, new ideas. You have one minute, 30 seconds. Rock it out, guys. Let's go. If you're skimming through, look for that, however, then figure out what new idea. One minute. Twenty seconds. All right, scholars. Let's see this new idea. Many ancient Egyptian women were, however, kept from certain leadership roles in Egypt. So yes, they could go find and pursue different careers, but mm, not so much in leadership roles. Scholars, we have one more paragraph to deep dive into to find its key idea. So let's look at paragraph 12. Paragraph 12 helps us understand the author's purpose. Why did the author write this article? What's the best evidence to support your answer? So one, you're telling me why the author wrote this article and what is the best piece of evidence to um, support your claim? One minute, 30 seconds. Come on guys, rock it out. This is the last one. Let's go. seconds. All right, scholars, we made it. I wrote that people can learn about gender equality by studying ancient Egypt. So the author's purpose was to inform us that people can learn about gender equality by studying ancient Egypt. Scholars, I know today was a lot, 
Thank you for sticking um, it through and making it all the way to the finish line with us. I hope you guys um, enjoyed breaking down this article paragraph by paragraph and understanding the roots to um, feminism in Egypt. So scholars, we are now at the end of our lesson today. So here's the deal. Your responses should be so juicy, spilled with so much evidence because we have a whole list right here. A list full of key ideas and evidence. So scholars, be sure when you answer the question today, what is the central idea of the article? Be sure to include at least two pieces of evidence. Again, your evidence are your key ideas on your T-chart. Cannot wait to read your responses. I will see you on Fantastic Friday.